Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today, there are some new beginner packs which are on the Gadget Store, and to be quite honest, they actually give some really good deals uh, for lower tier vehicles, uh, lower tier premiums, if you don't have access to them. And if you're a new player, I would definitely say these are great packs to be able to get you started, giving you a little bit of power at lower tiers, and having a little bit of fun with the game with some pretty good vehicles. So if you didn't know already, there was a pack which was already available, the US Beginners Pack. Uh, this is a pack that we talked about maybe uh, about half a year ago or so and it has the m3a1 stewart in it and also the p36a a premium account for seven days and 120,000 silver lines that's an incredibly good deal and it seems like uh, they've made the deals even better because the p36a rasmussen's in game is actually not a premium vehicle uh, it's actually just a standard you know uh, standard gift vehicle whereas if you have a look at the two new packs that they've created the German beginner pack and also the Soviet beginner pack you get two premium vehicles uh, of rank one each and then you get 120,000 silver lines seven days of premium overall for $5.99 now seven days of premium if we use the general calculation comes out to be around $2.60 so if we take $2.60 from that $5.99 what do we get uh, $3.99 $3.30 so you're getting uh, two premium vehicles for three dollars thirty or around about what one dollar uh, 65 each so this pack is insane value if you want to first of all get started with the game or just get a few vehicles that are really really fun the t126 and the sdkfc 141 are both incredibly good vehicles and also even the fighters which go along with them may not be exactly meta but at least sokovsky's is incredibly good so these are what the packs look like on the store a five as i said five dollars 99 each you also have a few little videos uh, just to talk about the vehicles and also uh, the premium bonuses that they bring along and it's nice to see that they're finally expanding the beginners packs i hope that uh, we get beginner packs for every nation just so people can you know once they once they want to you know play a new nation they can just drop you know like six dollars and be able to you know do that and have a bit of fun with it uh, but the main thing uh, to understand is this is only available so far for the soviets the germans and the us and since they're the major nations it does make sense for them to be the first one so we're going to look at the soviet pack first uh, the t126 and zakovsky's and then we'll have a look at the german one after so let's just switch over to the game Ta -da! and then, <laughs> and then uh, we might uh, switch back so let's have a look at the two vehicles that are on offer so the two vehicles uh, for the soviets are the t126 and zukovsky's now zukovsky's i-153 is a 2.0 vehicle in realistic it's a 1.7 vehicle in arcade and the reason why it's such a high br for a biplane is because it has a lot of really nice things to it first of all it has four chicas 762s the wonderful thing about Shikas machine guns is the fact that they uh, have a ton of ammunition and also they have a really low uh uh, a really low rates of uh, jamming so they actually take ages for you to actually jam the vehicles on top of this as well it's one of the most powerful biplanes in the game because it has this huge engine in it uh, this uh, Svedstov m62 nine cylinder 820 horsepower it also gets access to some great secondary weapons in the form of rbs 82s and then also rs 82s and 450 kilo bombs so you don't just have to use this in an aerialistic sense, you can also use this in a ground realistic sense as a kind of pseudo attacker alongside some of the other vehicles that you have. Sokovsky's also comes with uh, some really nice belts for the offensive 792s and the main thing about it even though it's a biplane it has insane climb rates even up to really high altitudes and it's able to hang with a lot of the vehicles uh, that you see from other uh, countries around the 2 OBR. You just have a really good turn rate, you have a really good elevator, you have a really good roll on it as well. There's a lot of things which are positive for this aircraft and in a ground realistic sense which which is obviously generally the game mode that I mostly play, what you find uh, from it is it's really good over the combat area, not just to kill you know, uh, little vehicles uh, with bombs, but also as a fighter because of its maneuverability, because of the fact that you can toss it around the air and you can have a ton of fun with it in many different ways. It's just one of those aircraft you can just 
you can you can dominate the ground uh you know uh, sorry you can dominate the air battle above the ground it is definitely an air superiority fighter so the guns as i said you can see the 7.62s, they have a really high fire rates, they also have pretty decent muzzle velocity, and also, you know, they have, as I said, they don't jam too quickly, so you've got all of those wonderful things coming for you. They also, of course, have the rockets as well, so you can use them. Uh, they have around about 60 to 70 millimeters worth of penetration, so you're going to be able to touch and hurt pretty much everything that you fight. It's a really fun little plane, and also when we look at the rewards that are on it, for a rank one vehicle you're looking at 90 percent to sell so not too much but compared to normal tech tree vehicles you know it's not very high uh, so that's something uh, to look for but the research wise 232 percent remember that is plus 10 percent, so it should be 222 percent that is a uh, really really good for this starter vehicle it just puts it uh, in a nice place uh, to be able to research stuff really effectively and also just have a bit of fun you also get it fully spaded so you don't have to worry about baiting it generally i would say to people if you're new to the game and you're playing you know with these beginner packs make sure to play them a decent bit but also you know make sure to play the other vehicles in the tech tree just so you can get a feel for the different types of vehicles that are around the next vehicle is the t126 now the t126 sits at 2.7 and there's a really good reason for that it's just a thick boy t50 and what i mean by this is if you have a look at it compared to the t50 let's actually just put them together it's just a slightly wider version of it so which is just really hilarious uh, it's one of those machines which uh, has a very similar role on the battlefield to the t50 uh, because of uh, the fact that i believe they were made around the same time like the t126 was made before the t50 or you know at the same time and it was kind of what they wanted to go with but then they realized the turret itself didn't really fit too well and also uh, it was a little bit uh, thicker but the uh, if you have a look at the general armor profile you've got 55 mil meters on the front so nearly effective thickness of 80 to 90 which is grand you got a turret with 45 millimeters and you got that 45 millimeter 20k so very similar uh, profile to the t50 just a little bit of a wider base on it as you can see and that this gun is easily good enough uh, at the level that it's at to be able to penetrate and deal tons of damage to whatever it feels like it has 70 uh, millimeters worth of pen on its APHEBC and up to 106 millimeters on the APCR so you don't have to worry about penetration it also has access to four crews so if your turret gets popped you can still run around the place if you've played the T50 you know how this uh, thing feels it's just a little bit heavier a little bit slower uh, but is able to canter still at a decent place and because of the fact that it has a wide a track it's a little bit more maneuverable which is kind of nice on it and also uh, if we have a look at some of the other stuff it has a slightly better gun depression because of the slightly different turret but one thing you will have to as i said compete with is the fact that it won't be as fast as a t50 but on maps such as snow and sand it's going to be better at traversing and moving about you generally don't really see uh, the impact of the lower top speed uh, between the 126 and the T50 just because the acceleration is so good between the two vehicles. You don't normally enter a, a position where you know you stop starting, stop starting enough to get to that top speed. And uh, because of its uh, wide tracks, because of how it is set up, you can actually do really well against a lot of forces. It has a really good reload as well, 3.4 seconds, which for a lot of the meta machines is very standard around this BR. It's got good gun depression. It's got, uh, you know, obviously good rounds and everything like that. Only issue is, of course, gun is not very stable on the move. But because of, uh, even though you don't have good turret rotation, you can turn the whole tank to a target and then shoot, right? So you can shoot here, then let's say if the target here, you can move quickly, get the gun stabilized and fire. So, yeah, it's one of those vehicles where... Uh, even though, you know, you uh, you don't have the great gun traverse, uh, you have overall pretty good traverse. So therefore, you can just uh, kill pretty much anything you move. you just got to wait until the gun stabilizes, and then you can fire. So for me, I really like this vehicle. It's one of those ones which I go back to every once in a while to just uh, kind of have a bit of fun with and just uh, kind of relax and, you know, play 
uh, when, you know, I don't have to really grind anything or do anything. So I would definitely uh, say it's a nice one to have. And because of the lineup around us, you know, the T2080 and also the T50, you've got a very solid uh, lineup there to be able to research. It's also got very good rewards, 329% RP on it compared to 223% of the T50. So you can blast past rank 1 and rank 2 with it uh, incredibly competently. The next two vehicles are, of course, the German ones. And the German ones are the SD. KFC 141, which might be uh, one of the most <laughs> broken vehicles at rank 1, or at least broken premiums. And then aircraft, you have access to the HE112B1U2. So this one probably isn't as broken. Uh, it uh, is one of those ones which uh, used to be a good plane, but is kind of a plane of a bygone era now. At 2.3, uh, it has good access to weaponry, two 20mm MGFFs, and two 7.92s. The main issue that the HE-112 has is the fact that it, first of all, doesn't get any secondary armaments, so you're pretty much stuck with what, you, uh, what you've got, so you're just an out-and-out -out fighter. Uh, you aren't able to, you know, really affect ground for force battles because the MGFFs don't have a lot of penetration and also because of the way that the engine is set up and the speed of the machine uh, what has happened around the 2OBR is there is a lot of bombers and also a lot of other machines around 2.0, uh, like the J-22, the CW-21, and also the HE-100, which have become, you know, incredibly powerful in the speed department. And the good thing about Zukovskis that we talked about before is the maneuverability of the plane. You're able to flip around, you're able to roll really well, you're able to basically just defensively fly until they run out of energy, then you can kill them. In the HE-112, that's a little bit harder to do, because its roll rate isn't as good, uh, its speed is a little bit faster which is nice but the overall issue is it it's one of those jack of all trades master of none vehicles where it doesn't climb exceptionally well it turns okay you know it, it does everything okay but it doesn't have something which you know spots it out as an amazing plane and that's generally the the problem with this vehicle and <laughs> god damn it uh, but uh, the the thing is it's still technically what a dollar 75 or whatever it is and that is a hell of a pickup um for a vehicle like this even if you don't use it too much or you just use it as an air superiority fighter in ground realistic uh you know you don't you don't necessarily have to always use these in air realistic and stuff they're very good in air arcade the mgffs are great in arcade and you also have that boosted flight model so you can run around and you know do the crazy thing but overall firepower is great on it the elevator is not as strong as i'd like it to be the roll rate is okay general speed is okay but there's just a lot of aircraft around 2 which do better than you so it's probably the worst out of the four vehicles that we've had a look at today um but you know it's it's still a nice pickup and it also has some really nice skins uh, so the b1u2 has you know the hungarian air force camouflage which is really lovely to get and also the romanian air force camouflage as well so you can work towards those two the last vehicle is the sdkfc 141 uh, this uh, absolute monstrosity right here if uh, this normally goes on humble bundle uh, discounts every so often and i always say to people you should pick this up it is an insanely good machine because it has access to the 20 millimeter it has good speed uh, around it it doesn't have the best armor but still 50 millimeters at 1.3 uh, means that you're gonna have to shoot it maybe once or twice to be able to kill the whole crew of four people with access to the 20 millimeter it has also hvab for it so pen 64 millimeters and the gun is incredibly stable on the move uh, so what you can do is you can just run around like a madman just popping people and running away very similar to what you would do in the panzer 2c this thing can also get up to it effectively because it can deal with planes because it has good gun elevation on both of its guns but you can see how stable the gun is as we go so you can just uh, you can just use the little clip of 10 rounds to bap anything in your path. Uh, 10 rounds is easily enough to be able to uh, walk along any of the vehicles. You can see how we can just easily just set up shots. It's much easier to do it in the third person than it even is in first person. And you can just keep bopping. You can just keep firing very, very accurately with this, even going at 30 
three kilometers an hour. You also have access to a high firing, high muzzle velocity machine gun, which can help against targets which don't have a lot of armor, and also it can help against aircraft because, as we said, you know the gun elevation on these guns is great, uh, so you can use it to kill biplanes, you can use it to kill any plane which you may see at the lower BRs. So it's got good speed, it's got a great gun on it, it's got you know a good clip as well, great HVAP. It's got pretty much everything you need apart from maybe it has a little bit uh, low armor in certain parts, but that's okay, you know, it, it is able to deal with that. A squad of these running around is deadly uh, to any team <laughs> which you may run into. They're, they're really, really good machines. Even, once again, the, the, the turret traverse isn't great, but the overall traverse of the vehicle is really good. So you can just turn, fire, and just mash them. It's as simple as that. It's a really nice vehicle. They also changed the 20 millimeter sound, so it sounds very meaty uh, when you're actually firing. Like, listen to this. Now that's a really nice sound, right? Like, uh, it's, it's really, really good. And you won't have issues penning anything. You won't have issues uh, with that. You also have access to artillery, so you can go on artillery things. And since it's a 1.3, you can run it with a really baller, uh, a really baller German lineup, you know, uh, especially since they've just moved down a bunch of vehicles. You can run it with stuff like the Panzer 4C, the Panzer 3E is getting moved down to 1.3, the SDKFC 221 is also there, which is a really fun vehicle, Panzer 38T, he is great as well, and also the Flak Panzer, which is just a mini SDKFC 141. So I would say overall, this is just a great lineup with oh, and also the Panzer twos. I forgot about them. This is a great lineup and a great premium on top of this. So my opinion on all of these packs, including the American one, which we saw added a while back, they are great purchases. If you are a new player, if you're an old player looking for some fun rank one vehicles as well, just to kind of uh, have some fun with these are really good vehicles uh, to you know pick up the t126 and the sdkfc 141 my only real criticism of these packs uh, is the fact that there is no naval component to them uh, even though we have like starter premiums for naval it would be nice if we saw them represented uh, in these packs but if they're just going to do ground and air i mean these are really good value for money so if you're new to the game i'd pick them up depending on what nation you want to play and if you are you know, a, an existing veteran or an older player, uh, the the vehicles that are on offer here are really, really fun. Maybe apart from the 112, but everything else is great. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Blackie, Chris Giltnane, Daniel Stanton, Jay Wilt, John Ryman, Martinez, Moxie, Super Cacti, Trigger Hippie, Eugene's Terry, and also Elove Goat and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.